Hey guys, Bama Medic here. Just wanted to give you an update of what I'm doing with the uh, with Cousin Eddie here, our camper. I'm a ham radio operator and I want to be able to have my ham radio equipment with me, so I'm putting this rack together. Everything's just sitting in there for right now. But right here is an ICOM 746, 706, excuse me, Mark 2G. This is the matching AT100 ICOM power supply. That's an ICOM up here. Up here I've got a Radio Shack Pro 2030 uh, scanner and a Linco DR605 uh, dual band. That's VHF, UHF. Yes, this is a uh, CB, chicken band, Charlie Bravo, whatever you want to call it. And then down here I got two Samlex uh, 23 amp switching power supplies. The reason I got two, they would run everything just fine but uh, I decided I'd have a second one for a backup. So uh, I'm gonna do that. And up here I got my speakers. And then this thing over here, sorry, the bug was on me. This thing over here is pretty neat. This is a uh, AudioVox um, FRS and weather base station. But it is it has rechargeable battery. It's not charged right now. You can hang it on a wall. It does have a fixed antenna. But uh, neat thing about it is you unplug it and you can take it outside with you and set it on the table. So I'll be able to use that for FRS. So I'll be able to cover FRS, GMRS, MERS, uh, VHF, UHF, uh, monitor all the weather frequencies, uh, HF, six meters, everything. And uh, that uh, 706 also does a two meter uh, sideband. Uh, and six meter uh, upper and lower sideband, of course, HF. So it'll uh, it'll cover everything from daylight to dark, just about it within normal ham bands without trying to get into the uh, uh, satellite stuff. Now let me show you how I'm getting all this in. I previously had mounted my uh, um, dual bander in there in the camper, and what I did was on one of the access doors. Let me zoom in a little so you can see it. This is a SO239 pass-through. Let me get it to focus. And I've got rubber cap. It's, well, it's metal, but it's got a rubber seal in there. And uh, that goes in there. And then on the other side, it looks just like that. So I can hook a jumper coax in there. It, sorry. And everything will be the same on the inside. I don't ever have to disconnect and reconnect and disconnect and reconnect. All I do is I mount my antennas, and I'll show you that in a minute, and hook my coax up right there and I'm gonna have four of those across the door here labeled. Okay, so under the wheels, when I, I haven't got these made, I'm gonna get those made and I'll show you the process and what they look like when they're done. I'm gonna have a drive on plates and I'm gonna have several of those, probably one or two here and then one or two on the other side. And what that's gonna be is just a flat steel plate with a, uh, a pipe sticking up out of it that you'll be able to that I'll be able to stick one of these mass pipes in. Now this is just, this silver one here is a standard piece of fence top rail. Okay, the gold one is uh, actual mass pipe from Lowe's or Radio Shack or whatever when Radio Shack was open. This silver piece here is also a piece of fence pipe. I bought it Lowe's, I think they're like $6. See, it says top rail right there. I don't know if you can read that or not. Try to get the focus here. But it's just top rail from Lowe's. And these right here are heavy duty masks. Let me back up, let it focus in. These two here and here are heavy duty masks. And I just want to show you some of the different options. Now this one here with the pulley on it and these pieces of pipe, what I do is I got a, another piece of top fence rail I put up there, but this extends out and um, it's actually three pieces. I usually mount this antenna. This is called a dual band J pole, the one with the red tips right here, this one. And it's called a J pole because if you look at it, it looks like a J. See? It, it comes, let me get my finger in it. See, it comes like that and it goes up to make a J. 
And then this center piece right here is for UHF or 440. So that makes it a dual band. The this one and the long one, excuse me, this one here and the long one are for two meters. And then the short piece and that one on the other side makes it uh, for uh, 440. Okay, now this right here is a Midland CB antenna. It is not great, it is not big, but I don't plan on trying to talk all over the world with it. Just be able to talk if somebody's in the area. Okay. Then these right here are what they call ham sticks or uh, mobile uh, ham radio antennas, kind of like the old CB whips, but they're tuned for different bands. Now, what you can do with that is you can take something like this little deal right here. This is a dipole antenna mount by Quicksilver Radio, and you can see it wasn't but $18. I had a friend of mine pick a second one of these up at the uh, Huntsville Birmingham Ham Fest, I think it was, or Mississippi, I'm not sure. But anyway, what you do is you can mount two of those antennas. Instead of them sticking straight up, you mount them horizontally. And uh, that makes a rotatable dipole. So I've got two for 20 and two for 40 and uh, 40 meters. And I'm going to mount them on a piece of pipe like this right here. And what you can do is you can mount two on one for 20, come down just a little bit on the mast and mount two on that for 40, use a T-splitter, feed them together, and then feed them with one coax. The neat thing about that is, is the radio frequency when you transmit will automatically want to go to the resonant antenna. So it's not going to try to give you a bad impedance match unless your antenna is just way out of tune. So with that I'll be able to mount the two antennas and have 20 and 40 on there for be able to do the capability of that one. Now the next thing is I've also got a capability of with this pulley right here pulling up a uh, wire dipole or uh, I have a slinky antenna which is just two slinkies with a baleen in the center and you stretch it out and yes it is just like the toy slinkies that's that's what it's made out of so you can you got several different choices I also have my my Comet mag mount that I use temporarily if I'm just throwing up a quick antenna you can stick that on the awning of the camper right up there flatten that awning out or go toss it up on the roof up there and uh, we have a metal roof on our camper so that would give me a good ground plane so that's just some of the things we're doing also I have this is a 440 sorry about the shadow this is a 440 antenna here that a friend of mine built it's just made out of welding rod and PVC pipe with what I think is called a stub match right there on the other side then this is a two meter antenna, a three element beam two meter. And it's got a basically the same thing, a little stub tuning match there. And uh, let's see, I think that's about it other than, well, this right here, these are military mass. This one is aluminum, as you can see. This one is plastic or like a fiberglass. They're real light, they're kits, and I bought two kits. Uh, they go up to about 45 or 50 feet. The reason I bought two is I bought this first one here, and after talking with some people, they said if you go up very high, they have a tendency to snap off at the head right here. So I'm gonna use very, very lightweight stuff on it. But these right here do not snap off. So I'll be able to go up 40, 50 feet with that. <clears throat> so, and that does have a ground mount and everything, but that's going to be just easier to put it in the uh, the mount, the flat plate with the pipe sticking on it. Now, like I said, I'll show you those when I get around to it. Last and least, one of the more important things for most folks nowadays, this is a Wi-Fi antenna. So. It is an 8 dB gain. I don't have the coax or the rest of the bracket. It's brand new. It was in the box. I took it out for this. And I'm going to mount it 
right up there. I'm going to attach it just on the side of the, one of those uh, struts for the TV antenna. I'm going to run the coax in and then I'm going to hook that up to a router and make an access point. And with that antenna, I'll be able to connect to any area uh, Wi-Fi that may be a little farther out than we can normally reach because, you know, the antennas and laptops are not very good. And I've also got a big parabolic dish that I can put up if I need to. It's like 35 dB gain. This in here is only 8 dB. The higher the dB, of course, the more gain you get, the better you can pull in a weak signal. But anyway, that's, I just want to give you an update. I'll show you the radios over here later when I get them mounted in. And uh, just wanted to give you an update. I haven't done a video in a while. I'll post this. This will be part one. And I'll show you part two. And I might even have to do a part three and four once I get the brackets mounted and actually put everything in use. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. Bama Medic out.